Hi, welcome back to Daily Movie Recaps. A new movie recapped, every single day. Today, we'll recap a 1999 American drama thriller starring Brad Pitt and Edward Norton. Spoilers up ahead, so watch out. Enjoy the recap. Emerging from a drop of sweat through the webbing of neurons and brain cells, we find ourselves in front of the sweat-drenched face of the protagonist and narrator. Tyler Durden has stuck a gun barrel in his mouth, and asks him, if he has anything to say. Tyler removes the gun, he looks out of the high-rise window to the dark city below them. The narrator tells that the building is planted with explosives, Tyler checks his watch. The narrator recalls everything and brings us to the beginning of the story. The narrator tells us he hasn't slept for almost six months because of his insomnia. He is a traveling product recall specialist for a car company. He browses through catalogs, purchasing decor for his apartment. He goes to his doctor seeking help, but all the doctor will do is suggest an herbal supplement, instead of drugs. He visits a support group for testicular cancer to see real pain. There, the narrator meets Robert Paulson, also called Bob, an ex-bodybuilder who suffers from gynecomastia due to hormone treatment after his testicles were removed. He hugs the narrator in his enormous breasts in support. The narrator burst into tears. The emotional release allows him to sleep and he subsequently becomes addicted to support groups, mapping out his week attending different meetings, and feigning illness. One day as he was hugging Bob, a girl named Marla Singer interrupts them. He sees her at multiple meetings, including at the testicular cancer support group, and is disturbed by her lies, to the point, where he can't sleep anymore. He now watches TV all night. The narrator has a vision of Marla, while meditating. He confronts her, and warns to expose her. She argues that she's doing exactly what he does, and quips that the groups are cheaper than a movie, and there's free coffee. Instead of ratting each other out, they agree to split up the week, and exchange numbers. His job as a traveling product recall specialist for a car company doesn't help his insomnia, since he must travel often, experiencing bouts of jet lag in addition to the everyday stress of his position, admiring the tiny life of single serving soap and shampoo, at every location. On a flight back from one of his business trips, the narrator meets a soap salesman Tyler Durden. Tyler shows the narrator a unique plane emergency procedure manual. The narrator arrives at the baggage claim to discover, that his suitcase has been confiscated, most likely due to a mysterious vibration, before he taxis home. However, at arrival, he finds his 15th-storied home has been blasted because of a faulty gas line, ignited by a spark from the refrigerator. He finds Marla's number from the burnt remains, which he calls from the public phone booth, but hangs up before talking. He finds Tyler's business card, and calls him. They meet in a parking lot behind a bar. Tyler invites the narrator to come to live with him on one condition, that the narrator hits Tyler as hard as he can. The narrator narrates that Tyler also works as a projectionist slipping bits of porn between reels, and as a waiter contaminating customers' dishes. The narrator, though puzzled, complies, and they engage in a fistfight before sharing a couple of drinks. The experience is surprisingly euphoric, and the narrator and Tyler return to Tyler's dilapidated house. Tyler and the narrator have more fights between them, and also get attention from other guys from the bar. Soon their fight club grows, and Tyler establishes a formal fight club in the basement of the bar where they had their first fight. Tyler and the narrator now have a series of rules including, you do not talk about fight club, and if someone taps out, the fight is over, or only two guys to a fight, etc. The rules are consistently broken, with members inviting their friends to join them. One day the narrator gets a call from Marla, who is overdosed on Xanax. He tells her that he has joined a new support group for men only. He's tired of her rambling, and sets the phone down. The next day in the kitchen, he is astonished to see Marla. This insults her, and she leaves in disgust. Tyler reveals, that he picked the phone, followed the call to Marla's home, and brought her back to the house, where they engaged in vigorous sex. One night, the narrator and Tyler managed to steal human fat out of the dumpster of a liposuction clinic. Back in their kitchen, Tyler teaches the narrator, to render tallow from the fat. After explaining a bit about the history of soap making, Tyler kisses the narrator's hand, and dumps pure lye on the spot, causing a horrific chemical burn. Tyler refuses to let the narrator wash the lye off his hand, saying that water will worsen the burn, and tells the narrator that the burn is a rite of passage. Tyler has identically burned his hand. Tyler also forces the narrator to accept allegiance to him, and then neutralizes the burn with vinegar. Later, when they meet with a cosmetics salesperson, at a department store, the narrator remarks, that Tyler's soap sells for a very high price. Tyler doubts club members for breaking rules, and the bar owner Lou interrupts them, and warns everyone to leave. 
Tyler allows Lou to beat him up, and then coughs blood all over him, demanding to stay in the basement. Horrified, Lou agrees. Tyler gives the club members a homework assignment to pick a fight with a stranger and lose. Bob accosts people in a downtown plaza, another member antagonizes a priest. The narrator finally confronts his boss, with knowledge about substandard practice, and negotiates to work from home, with increased pay, to keep his mouth shut. When his boss objects, and calls security, the narrator beats himself up severely. The narrator now leaves his job. Tyler and the narrator continue managing Fight Club. With the narrator, Tyler threatens a college dropout, named Raymond K. Hessel, at gunpoint if he doesn't pursue his dream of becoming a veterinarian. After some days, Tyler turns the basement of the house into a laboratory where he uses soap and other ingredients to make explosives. He creates a team, with some club members, and calls it Project Mayhem, and the narrator was not a part of it. They threaten the police chief with castration, and the investigation is called off. As they walk away from the fight club, after the narrator's fight, Tyler drives the narrator, and two members in a large Lincoln Town car. In the rain, Tyler taunts the narrator, suggesting, that he hasn't even begun to live his life, to his fullest potential. When he allows the car to drift into oncoming traffic, Tyler scolds the narrator, for being weak and pathetic. Tyler then admits, that he destroyed the narrator's apartment. The narrator finally gives in. Tyler lets the car drift, and they slam head on into another vehicle. They emerge from the wreck, with Tyler exclaiming, that the narrator has a new life based on his living through a near-death experience. The narrator is left at home, with an ever-increasing band of Mayhem members, as Tyler has disappeared for a while. When the narrator demands to know more, he has replied with the first rule of Project Mayhem is you do not ask questions. Later Bob is killed during a botched sabotage operation and the narrator seeks to disband the group, before things get out of control. He tries to find Tyler, discovering all over the country where Tyler had been for Project Mayhem. One day at a bar, the bartender addresses the narrator as Sir, which prompts the narrator to ask, if he knows him. The bartender, after being assured, that he's not being put through a test, tells the narrator, that he is Tyler Durden. In shock, the narrator returns to his hotel room, and calls up Marla, asking if they've ever had sex. Though irritated, Marla confirms their relationship, and states, that she knows him as Tyler Durden. Marla hangs up, and Tyler suddenly appears in the room, and confronts the narrator, telling him he broke his promise, to not speak about Tyler to Marla. A few minutes of conversation confirms that they are, indeed, one person. The epiphany causes the narrator to faint. When he wakes up, he finds a phone list at the hotel reception with calls from all over the country. He returns home, and finds no one there, but one bulletin board yields a display of folders detailing certain buildings within the financial district. He finds that each one has been infiltrated by members of Project Mayhem, and that Tyler is planning on destroying them, to erase credit card company records. He goes to tell Marla the whole truth, but Marla's fed up because of his strange behavior and doesn't listen to him at all. The narrator gives her some money, and suggests she leaves the city. The narrator reports himself to the local police. He discovers that the officers are Mayhem members, and they tell him that they were instructed by him to take the balls of anyone who interfered with Project Mayhem. Even him. The narrator manages to escape by stealing one of the officer's pistols, and runs to one of the buildings set for demolition. He finds an unmarked van in the parking garage filled with nitroglycerin and attempts to disarm the bomb. Tyler appears and goads him but the narrator successfully disarms the bomb. He and Tyler engage in a fierce fight which appears oddly on the surveillance camera since the narrator is only fighting himself. The Tyler personality wins and reactivates the bomb, and the narrator brings himself to another building where they can safely watch the destruction. We see Tyler holding a gun in the narrator's mouth. He mumbles and says that he can't think of anything. The narrator begs Tyler to abandon the project, but he professes, that what he's doing is saving mankind from the oppression of consumerism, and unnecessary luxuries. The narrator now realizes that the gun Tyler is holding is actually in his hands. He puts the gun in his mouth, and pulls the trigger. The bullet shoots out of the side of his jaw, and Tyler is killed with a gaping wound to the back of his head. As the narrator recovers, members of Project Mayhem and Marla arrive. Seeing him wounded, they leave Marla alone with him to fetch some medical supplies. Tyler stands with Marla and tells her that everything's going to be fine as the first detonation ignites the building in front of them. The others on the block soon follow suit, and Tyler takes Marla's hand in his, and tells her you met me at a very strange time in my life. You met me at a very strange time in my life. They watch as the explosives go off and the buildings collapse. Please leave a comment or like, and don't forget to subscribe, and turn on your notifications.
This way you'll never miss any movie recap again. Thanks for watching, and see you at the next movie recap.